It is a truth universally acknowledged that a person in possession of feet must be in want of socks. So let's make some more. With the epitome of chaos sock yarn that you saw a couple of weeks ago. Now, whenever I conceptualize a pair of socks, especially when working with my hand spun yarn, I like to make my socks toe up. Because then anything can happen with the length of the sock. You can make it as long as the yarn permits it. And I start mostly but what I think is called a Turkish cast on. I'll show you. So with a Turkish cast on you will actually cast on, on two needles at the same time. So I start by putting it one knot on the bottom needle and then I start wrapping the yarn around the two needles to how many stitches one might need. I'm going to say that we need 12 stitches so I'm going to wrap it around 11 times and then a half one like, on the top needle as well over here and then it's a case of carefully knitting only the top loops and keeping them on the bottom needle And now you turn it over and do the exact same thing. And we have started the toe of our sock. Now we will increase on both sides until we have a nicely shaped toe. So uh, first impressions of this chaos yarn knit up. I'm actually quite happy. It's not very stripy. I had feared that maybe the color changes were too far between and that it would be like a self-striping yarn. It's not. It's absolutely not. Lovely. <laughs> Just what we want. Hi. Good morning. I am in the Ardennes, the most southern part of Belgium. I've got my handy dandy project bag. And, of course, in a project bag is a project. It's my sock over here. I have decided that because it is such a delicate, fine, you know, soft looking yarn, that I wanted like a lace pattern on my sock. That's what I did. Yeah, it's October. Let's knit a sock. I've got a spindle in my way of my yarn multifunctional project bag. the advance on this sock it's like the size of my head now and it is probably the first time that I actually have underestimated how much yarn I spun because I think one skein would have been enough for one pair of socks um, but I made two skeins I'm going to use two skeins I think I'm going to make stockings, like real long stockings. I think that's going to be so dainty with the lace pattern. Which I didn't think I told you, but I'm not following an actual sock pattern. I just have a folder 
with pages that my grandmom collected when she was still able to knit. And that just has a lot of different kinds of patterns, lace patterns included, and I just chose one of those to make these socks that will now become stockings, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it also because I really love how the colors are coming out, how they are playing, intertwining in the sock. I think the majority of the brown, the beige, like the colors from the alpaca that I used in it, really make for a uniform um, item. It looks like this would be a sock yarn that you could buy in store and that I would definitely buy in store. It doesn't look like this was just all mishmashed randomly together, I think. It has a kind of uniformity about it. I don't know if that made any sense at all. I just love this sock yarn and I am excited for really pretty lace stockings if i can get them finished in time because i do not have to forget that i only have the month of october to make this but i'm positive i'm positive and i'm very motivated because i like this and that's the thing with if i have pretty yarn that i like the continuation of or I have a pretty pattern that I want to see the next row of, I can knit so much faster than if I have a pattern or a yarn that's just plain and simple and might just bore me after a while and then knitting gets a chore. This is not getting a chore because every row is a different combination of the three singles in my yarn and then the pattern is super pretty too. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. This is happy knitting. I am speed. Look at this. It's like almost twice my face now. But yeah, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to make an afterthought heel. I didn't forget that feet have heels. And that socks need them too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love this sock. Oh, a stocking. I don't know how you call it. Knee high sock. It's going to be. I think I have a couple of centimeters left of just making the leg of the sock before I need to make a border cuff and then the heel. Nice. And then when the main sock is finished, we add the heel as an afterthought, even though I find it quite an important part of a sock, but that's just me, I guess. I graft it close with the Kitchener stitch and then we can show off our first finished sock. And what do we say to the god of second sock syndrome? Not today. Hi, it's October 16th. So we're officially at the halfway point of Socktober. And I, of course, well, way ahead of the halfway point of my pair of socks. Already have another face long sock. And I just want to point out how remarkably different these two socks are looking.
like it's it's a warm and cold water tap <laughs> as canes they looked so similar but as socks it's it's a completely different story but yeah anyway um when i was making this one i like randomly made increases just eyeballing on my leg but now i have to identically replicate what i did and that somehow is a lot harder <laughs> but we are more than right on track so let's continue now October 26th and I've come to the point where I can switch my tiny circular needles to the very thin needles my 1.5 millimeter needles and start knitting for the cuff and then all that rests is our heel and we're done with these knee-high stockings It is October 28th, approximately an hour past my bedtime, and they're done! They're done! And you will be proud of me, I have actually also woven in the ends immediately. <laughs> now, before we get to the saucy leg shots, here is what my patrons have been doing during the month of October. Feast thine eyes upon the epitome of talent that you see in these photos.
Wazow. They're done and I'm so excited for them. Even though they slipped down a little bit, I thought that decreasing on the cuff might help remedy that, but apparently they still do. As you know, knee-high socks are quite wont to do, I think. It is of course only the first time that I am wearing them, so I can't be real specific about the durability of these socks, but in any case, the alpaca has made them really soft and I do hope that the combination of the wool with the acrylic in there also makes them quite sturdy. I feel like they will be such an autumn staple to combine with all kinds of pantyhoses, all the colors, especially because these stockings just have all the colors already in them, so they magically fit with every item of clothing I own. That's a great result of having a chaos brain and wanting chaos socks. Chaos fits with everything. If you do not have chaos in your wardrobe yet, you should really invest in some chaos. I had a lot of fun once again chatting with my patrons over on Discord about all the projects that we were making, comparing our progress to one another. But of course, it was no competition, it was just good fun. And as you saw just moments ago, they made absolutely beautiful projects as well. And if you in the future also want to be part of such a community make along, then you can find my Patreon down in the description box. Now, I am actually lost for words. I don't know what else to say about these socks. If you have questions about them, please put them down in the comments. I would also like to know did you make anything for Socktober, Spooktober, this month of October? Well, right now it is November, but a week ago it was still October. So, did you make anything? And how are you preparing yourself for the colder months coming? Up until, you know, spring. Anyway, that's all for me. If you like this kind of fiber shenanigans, then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. Bye.